introduce uh, what's happening today. So today we're going to have a little bit of a different format uh, for workshops. So it's going to be uh, a lot more audience involvement and participation. And so Wyatt will be presenting her stories about market building and about some of the um, ideas and principles around creating a marketplace. So at uh, a certain point, we're going to be starting to ask questions from um, the audience. Simulation, yeah. yeah, simulations and all this other good stuff. And a lot of this is going to be improvised today because we didn't actually have the entire uh, slide deck ready. So just roll with it. Yeah. OK, uh, let's go ahead. I'll, I'll write this down. These are okay. some OKRs from the overall scope of the event. We want to learn about the key points of market building, and we want to share this information with you. Uh, what we're thinking of doing is actually having some Q and A's, right? Questions and answers from the audience. And so we'll talk a little bit, we'll answer questions a little bit, we'll demonstrate a little bit, and then uh, this should uh, be kind of an interesting new format. Okay, is everyone ready? Yes. Great. All right. Fantastic. So uh, let me move this over to the audience so the audience can see. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, uh, I present to you, Wyatt. Okay. So um, for today, I would like actually to share like um, how we actually like to understand partners. So we kind of partner to uh, we like to onboard because like my my other partner like to onboard, but actually we have to choose them. So the next one will be. So I have uh, an objective and uh, key results. So basically, my objective is um, to inspire, educate, educate uh, BP team how, uh, our journey to find a great opportunity and partnership. And then my key result is BP team can remember at least one success and tell your story or one new lead um, from that people by the by the end of the April first. April first, yeah. We were planning to do this workshop in the, in the beginning. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, let me. Okay, so. And then. Uh, so, Wait, this. Sorry. Yes? Is that one head or each one has one? Or 10 people have one lead? 10 people have one lead, yeah. Okay. So, each person feels confident about creating a lead that can get a new lead for our marketing. Okay? Yeah, 10 leads. 10 new leads, yes. Okay, and then. Uh, so, okay, I think I will uh, tell. Um, my story, uh, I give an example, I will tell one story about one of the uh, partner that I... Okay, so I choose the Kutu because this one is actually our first... Uh, it's a new thing for us because like we involve like a third, third party but we combine it with us. Like third party means like the... Um, there's a Jonathan, Jonathan is doing the operation but actually it's not part of us. So we combine our uh, service and his service to get to get this uh, uh, complex of villas. Otherwise, we 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 cannot even onboard them because we have they have no organization at all. So so what uh, we did is basically approach Jonathan and then Jonathan is uh, work at Changu. It's called. Uh, that one. The other one is KJS. Oh, yeah. So we know him from there. Turn the Changi Suites. Yes. Yeah. So and then we um, we take a chance to try uh, to do it here. And actually, until now it's working, and the operational working smoothly. And then the we do the marketing. But actually, I think because new area that uh, I am personally is not too happy with the performance. Uh, Revenue from the guy, but I see there's more booking coming, but hopefully it gets better. So uh, the the story behind this villa is like uh, the owner's name Ibu Omas. So I went there with Jan before. Jan is like the old mark, the ex market building. So basically, so uh, we see that a new building as as more more what we do. And then we go there and then uh, find out who's the owner. And then we approach the owner. And then apparently that she's very uh, like 80 years old lady. And then we ask like, uh, ask her what is the plan. And then she said like, oh, 
I'm planning to do like a short rental. Okay, that's good. And then ask, ask her like, what was uh, what is her mission for the for the villa? And then she said like, I wanna like because this is like my invest invest investing money in, in it. So she want like uh, as much return as possible. So okay, it's okay, great. And then we we came there like uh, two three times to you know talk to her slowly because she's you know kind of bit uh, bit older and then so we cannot talk fast because like you know, memory wise. But uh, we actually she have like couple uh, candidate that offering her to operate her place, but. But um, me, uh, Jonathan and uh, Jan and me convinced her to be uh, with us. It's why? Because we we uh, we have proposal that so we have a team that we can take care of the marketing. We have the back end of the marketing, and also we have Jonathan. And that time, Jonathan is really um, what do you call it? Really cares like about like um, basically. It's, He's willing to be beside her, like help her to like do like little thing, and then she's very confident about it, and then, and then so we signed the contract um, with her. So that is the story uh, behind the book. Okay, great. Um, I'll I'll ask some questions from Wayana, and then I'll put it up to the floor so that we you know have some experience doing this. So this is more kind of like a, a fireside chat, right? So what do you think was the well, what was the what was the success? What what made this a successful uh, onboarding. onboarding in your opinion? I think just um, at first so you have to understand the client, mm -hmm. and then so that's why like if we went there like talk like really think think you see it, then sometimes like have dinner together just to understand because um, because like. I think for her it's like to find like people that can trust that I like from uh, by talking like ask question because she's not gonna be here. So uh, that's what I understood and that and then by by close to her, uh, it's it's I think she can feel that we are like trustworthy person mm -hmm. because we sit there and then having dinner when we approach them and then we, we bring something from outside and okay let's get dinner and check together in her villa and then uh, after that she is feel more comfortable like when she comes to Bali she let me know like oh okay let like, have another chat and um, and then have drink and then uh, invite her son and her daughter to you know to listen to us what uh, we about and then the son also uh, asking questions about percentage, how is it work, and then how the payment work, like all the stuff. Like, and then I think this is a family uh, thing that it's just not one person decision. It's just like a family decision. So I think why it's successful because like we uh, we I make them feel like. We all can trust it, and then uh, they feel like comfortable, like oh, this guy knows what they're doing. That can uh, send that kind of message to them. Okay, and for people who haven't done market building before, how do you think they can get the confidence to 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 do these things, to ask for trust from an owner that they don't know, and how can they feel confident about approaching and finding new places and doing that? Um. It depends on each owner. But some owner have time and then want to know you, like uh, spend more time. I, but it's mostly like understanding, like on each client, is most important because like some people doesn't have time and in rush and I want to like see number and what you can do and um, and then uh, see your organization. And then some people just want to understand about the trust first instead of the number. And then you have to see which which category of, of this owner, and then if like the owner is about trust, and then I think he's spending more time with them, and um, and basically talk like sometimes talk with family, not always in the business. Like what are you doing? They they always want to know your background, like why are you here, and also we also ask them like hey, you, why are you building here? Like it's more relaxed kind of talks, but like knowing them like deeply on. Uh, 
on us and also knowing the people on their side like what uh, basically uh, you knowing like uh, their mission and then what what are the domain goal at the end but it sometimes it's taking longer process because it's like what trust and stand for her for her case because she, she spent a lot of money and you know she gonna not be here and then uh, totally understood about their part so that's why we spend more time and uh, especially Donald and I get there every day to have to set up everything so that was great. Okay. Okay. And what what do you think about like let's say what we do daily as a host is that prepare anybody who's working in hospitality right now to actually be involved in market building? Uh, kind of have already the The foundation. foundation, yeah, because like to understanding a guest is not much different understanding the owner, but it's a different um, different zone. Like understanding the guest is what itinerary, what they're gonna do, like how many days they here, what they what they're willing to to do, or what make them what is like their goal come out from Bali. Like for owner is this more like are they like more like investor side or wanna like somebody really look after them. Like, Great. Does anybody else have any questions? How long did it take you from leads to final contract? Oh, this one? Yeah, or... <coughs> uh, it's, uh, it's different. Like, for me, it's... How about for this one? For this one, I took, like, maybe three weeks. Because involved in... But let's, let's ask... Gabby was involved in this one, too, right, Gabby? Yeah, Gabby the first one. Yeah. Gabby, uh, when did you first discover this and when... Do you remember that we first uh, onboarded them? Uh, Gabby, do you recall how you first discovered this property and how long it took for them to get fully onboarded? Oh, whoops, sorry. I killed the volume on that one. After the first day, I found the place. So after I found this place, I asked for more. Sorry, I said the microphone. Okay, sorry, I can't I can't take your thing, Gabby. <laughs> The audio setup right now is a little bit different than, than traditionally. So, um, uh, okay, I guess we'll have to speak it up. Be, be uh, we're using two laptops and then that. that Maybe if you're getting mute two and then just. It is one. muted though. Yeah. It's muted. Muted. The only one, one that's available is Wyana's, yeah, so it should work. This one? Yeah. It's Wayana, right? Yeah, but she's sharing the screen. Yeah. Gabby, yeah, try saying something right now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. we can hear you on Wayana's on laptop. Okay, go ahead. So the first one I found is the uh, place we just finished building. And there's no one there except the security. And I asked for the owner's contact. What? Right, so you were just patrolling around, right? You were just kind of driving around the yeah, neighborhood. I'm droning the area first, sir. You droned the area first, okay, and then what did you find after you droned the area? I found this uh, tree field actually that Kara put it in front of it. Okay. Next to Kutu and next to Kutu. Wow, so this this came out of a drone discovery. Yeah, because I'm kind of passing the area first. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Yeah, okay. So all together, do you remember when you first discovered the property? Uh, between the discovery and filing when we onboarded, do you recall how long that process took? I'm only finding the leads, sir, because oh, during the onboarding, it was uh, get through to Jan and you. Ah, got it. Okay, all right. So it was about, let's say, a month uh, all together from discovery to, to, uh, to, to launch. To launch, yeah. And, and I think it's also worthwhile noting how we found it, right? So there was one day, somebody was flying a drone, saw that there was willows, and then the next day they went to follow up, or on the same day, they went to follow up, 
talk to the security guard, and boom, five bills right there, right? Just like that. So, uh, so it does it does happen. It's it's a reliable method. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Maybe Eggy or uh, Ruffin. Uh, which property is the faster lead and oh, uh, the faster and lead and who's the faster one? Okay, which was the fastest property to go from lead to finish deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, oh, Benita. Benita, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> oh. well, what what is the general time between discovering the property and when they are onboarded? Um, uh, so like the uncle, like took like one day. One day. Like uh, this one, uh, <coughs> like what is on? It's like it's it should be really long, like today. It's like like one day, two days. One or two days. Okay. Why is so easy? Why do you think it's so easy to onboard properties in this data? Um, I think I think uh, for. For the Amal, it just it was uh, I was lucky and it's ready and I just just need to launch. I'm actually not totally ready, but I make it ready. They were like have no seat yet, so we took a picture because we about to get out the next day. So basically, uh, we make a listing without a seat. Sheets, no sheets. Yeah. And then somebody booked it like whoa, okay, and then <laughs> so so we go we uh, call the. the the manager and say like, hey, actually this place is can sell. So where where is when you see coming? And then we go there back and take a picture of the scene. And uh, yeah, that's that, that's us. Okay, so like being improvisational, right? Going there, seeing the situation, just needs a little bit to improve, and then getting that getting that. But drug. yeah, but we tell that because they use finger, I think we can proud of it without see to see to end it. And then okay, let's do it. And then we. Without us listing a bad So you always bring him when you around him? No. So I just, uh, that time, uh, I didn't have an OU because I just started actually. I just started like that. I think that's the, the second property that I bought of uh, uh, Ayu Laba. And then uh, actually, I have open booking. And Ayu Laba, I think, hey, I have a get here. And the guest is. Okay, that's no problem. And uh, and call the the manager. Hey, are you accept this this much? And, okay, it's okay. And then that's how it's happened. And then we take a picture. And then after that, we launch more and more. And then just uh, rolling. Okay. And my my okay. So why do we get lost so quickly? Does it have anything to do with that the owners are already there and they can make a decision on the spot? Right. On that time, the owner not even there. I just oh wow. I just wow. like there is like even like that time because I just just started. I just want to get uh, some mm -hmm. listing. Right. Because I in the beginning, so I don't have any agreement until today. So it's not a good habit, but yeah, if you want to get started quickly, you can go out with no agreement. Um, yeah. I wouldn't recommend doing that anymore because over time. You might get lazy, you might not have any agreement in place, and the company might succeed. Yeah. And then you're in a very bad position then because they can just go, okay, all right. Yeah, for the uncle case, like I tried a couple times to sign an agreement, they did not commit yet. They say, like, oh, the invest is not ready, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the end. So basically, the owner is on the same thing. It's just kind of, on uh, that time, you just, I, I want to just start it, basically. If I didn't have, like, uh, a good man, and I, but I don't recommend to others because they're the only partner that doesn't have a good man in terms of leader. And Any other uh, questions from the floor? Yes, yeah. okay. Uh, so we do understand that leads are the leads yet, like we want to be in one Yeah. Leads. Um, how do you identify qualified leads and unqualified leads? Okay, so the question is how do I identify qualified from unqualified leads? Oh, uh, for leads, it's like, for me, it's like uh, go to a place that I think that attractive and good area first but it's gonna be deal or not it, I don't know in the beginning so I just just get the lead first and I screen out after and how do you screen out what, what sort of your factors that you use to screen out oh screen out like basically like asking like are they like uh, our system gonna use our uh, system or not like it just like because my goal is to make all the new onboarding green so I screen out means like for um, is it like 
friendly for our system or for the rest of the team or how are you gonna go in the future um, instead of like but also I screen property if like if the leads is like for example somebody some somebody come up to me hey I have a property and then I have to see it first but if not qualified I said you're not qualified because this is not um, it's below our standard if you can do this in that and then use this in that like use our system and then we can help you but at the moment you are not qualified like I reject like three uh, complex in something that doesn't what was the people. reason that we rejected that? so like uh, like Manta have like two co two complex like first complex and the second complex the mm -hmm. second complex the one have a view mm -hmm. but the first complex doesn't have a view and all the building and qualities and then they they approached me to market the other one I said like I can't market the other one because like the standard like the cleanliness and then the uh, the cleanliness of the floor and then the wall and everything so so this is this is have to be fixed first and then I said. The seat was purple, like, you know, the, it cannot be like purple seat, it has to be white. And then, and I spot like, oh, the towel is old, like, this is like the guest paying only for the amenities that they use. But if you use this kind of amenities, this is not acceptable because I care about my reputation, I care about the property reputation because that's how we do, otherwise, we get the first, the first review and then terrible and that's it's not going, uh, not going anywhere, I said. And then the owner said, okay, so I said to the owner, okay, sorry to say about this, but uh, I'm, I'm looking for the long-term partner, so don't get offended. Yeah, don't get offended because I'm, because I'm care, I said, about, like, you know, like, about your reputation in the future, my reputation in the future. And, uh, and the owner uh, actually fixed it. The, the, they clean up everything, the garden, it looks really tidy now. And I tried a uh, launch one, this thing, and I get three booking already. So, and then I will make another one. And But last time I went there, I will visit the room again. And it's like more presentable. They change the seat, they change the towels, they basically they clean up all the wall. And then uh, even like, Last time I went there, like more details. Oh, you need to chat this little bit, you know, to make it like more fresh. So definitely, uh, screening start from seeing the location where that location is. Going. I mean, like the, the property, mm -hmm. and then going after the um, like if there's system right there, the building, actually, just our system and all that thing, right? Yes. Um, my question now would be, what if we want that property and then? The honor happened to be hard to deal with. Like how we tackle those problems. Because we want that property so bad, and then like, the, prop, the problem now will happen to be the owner. Okay. Oh, let me repeat the question for the microphone. So the question is, what happens when we actually find a property that is actually really good, but the owner is a very difficult person to deal with? How do we balance that um, situation? Okay. So I think you need to write down what, how. How many percent that it's a good thing for us? How many percent is a good thing for them? And then you decided like, like what I mean the percentage is because like okay if they are like picky about pricing, about like picky about like small thing, that's okay. But if they don't want to use your, the system and then especially they have another agency, and then basically if there is complex uh, to get a booking normally I don't on, on board them. If it is picky about like. Oh, I wanna like involved in pricing and stuff. That's what can be. But take a while, sometime you know, like okay, I listen to you now and then. But you own risk. That's what I said. What I mean, you own risk. That means you gonna be empty, but don't blame us because I know the market. We gonna not respond what the price you want, but I can try. But the risk is gonna be empty. That. Then you're not gonna blame us because the market not respond to what they do. That I know right now, but in the future, but if you're willing to listen, and then we jump and then agree the management price for you. If there is one word I put on it, it's is the person coachable, right? Yeah. Meaning like, are they okay? If the person knows more than us, 
then we should probably listen to them. Right? If they say, hey, look, I've been doing this for longer than you have. I know this property better than you do. I know the market better than you do. And I can prove it. Then we should probably listen to them. Right? Like in cases, I think, of La Joya, they actually do have a pretty good comprehension of what prices should be. And so we follow the prices. They're actually pretty accurate in a lot of cases. Um, but in other cases, when a person is, is new and they don't know what they're doing, there is, there's already so many ways to fail, right? And so if you can see what they're doing is ultimately unsustainable, like they're courting every agency out there, they're putting themselves on 100 channels, but they don't have a way to manage money. Well, that's obviously going to result in overbookings at some point. That's obviously going to result in pain, and not everybody has patience dealing with that, so they're going to lose all their support really quickly. So no reason for us to jump in there and get ourselves dirty in that case. Right? Uh, we can say, all right, I know where this is going to go. You're going to hit that iceberg. And I don't want to be on the ship when you hit that iceberg. You can hit the ice ship, iceberg first, and then we can come back later and sell you lifeboats, right? Uh, that's a better strategy than, than letting them do you. But ultimately, if the person can be coached, I think if they're listening, they're like, okay, let's give it a try. Let's spend some time listening to your way. Let's spend some time listening to our way. But that's, that's ultimately a formula that I think does work. Um, yeah, no, no worries about like, you know, like if uh, uh, a thing going not like the way you want it, it's very normal. Very normal. It's uh, like for me, like in South Korea, like owner, like, hey, I want to uh, reach with you, like, okay, like, what do you have there? It's like, so where do you list it now? Oh, uh, this one, uh, hold my booking dot com, this one, hold this, there's like, Okay, if that's the case, you go with your friend first. So, but just leave a message. Okay, if you're ready, uh, come back to me. The whole thing, the system, the thing, and then come back to me. Actually, it's work. And like, they do come back because they need life books after one hour, right? And then actually work like it's the Kimpon Baba, like it's the other one. Um, so it's a work like oh, how is with your friend, like and some like as well. Yeah. So basically, they deal with friend. They will been with family but um but by the end you come back to us because like I think I think you have to be clear in the front or oh, this is what I, I can do, this is what I cannot do. And then if but when you say like oh I cannot do it now because you have your, your friend handle it, I don't want like uh, like competition with your friend or you say a nice thing like but say, uh hang a measure that oh and you're ready to onboard uh, with me totally and then come back to me anytime. So basically you not hate them but basically you give them opportunities to learn by themselves or with friends. But have a message that I am still open when you're ready to onboard for fun. In, in actually a sales scenario, this is called the good cop, bad cop scenario, right? So uh, most of times good cop, bad cop is like, does everyone know what that means, good cop, bad cop? So you get interrogated by a bad cop first and they're really mean, and then the good cop shows up and says, that guy's an asshole, let me really take care of you, gives you a cigarette, gives you a glass of water, and then he asks you questions, and then you start talking, right? So, a lot of cases where, let's say, originally they are working with, let's say, a friend or whatnot, or a family member, um, most of the time, if you don't do this professionally, you're going to have a bad situation happen sooner or later, right? So, you have